lowest price, the twist pin kits, and I show those off to those store managers, and they say, wow, and pretty soon a crowd gathers, and I have their interest for a couple of minutes. Uh, Jim Bob and I talked about making a whistling top, and so you got ready? I'm ready. It doesn't whistle, but it growls. Anyway, it's got a bunch of holes in it like an 1880s whistling top, but mine doesn't whistle yet. But, you know, it's learning. You're working. I'm working. working on and I'm, I'm trying to get ready for next Christmas, so I'm starting early. A uh, catawpa tree from our next door neighbor, and uh, it hadn't even cracked yet in our dry winter environment, so I'm going to turn some more. Thank you, Mr. Jim Bob. All right. I am next. I brought a work in progress. Uh, this is something I actually picked up a whole board of this at, at SWAT. Uh, it was it's ambrosia maple. I figured that I'm going to be able to get 10 blanks this size out of that board. If you want some, I will sell these for exactly what I paid for them, 10 bucks, except I circled them out. But this is going to be something that I donate for the show at the Arts Festival. And it's a really nice wood. Uh, I brought some more of my baby rattles. Since the first of the year, I have turned 42 baby rattles. Uh, unfortunately, out of that 42, only 14 are for sale. The other ones I gave away, but uh, that's all right. And plus, I also brought a platter that I made out of some mesquite. And Willard, why don't you take this for the Women's Protective Services at the conclusion of our program? Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Christian. Brought me a whole bunch more of the throw tops for the uh, art, art festival. Art festival. So that's cool. We'll have a we'll have a whopping good time with those. Uh, also, uh, you know, in the last month, I have probably given away um, probably fifty to seventy-five pin blanks. And there are some that I stabilize. And Phil, where is Phil? Yeah, right back over there. One of our class members came out and got some. And I gave him some uh, Buckeye Burl. And uh, he was like, bring some more of that. I need some of it. So I brought the whole box so he could pick through and find what he wants. I'll sell these for two bucks a stick, so, and that just helps defray some of the stabilizing costs. All right. <laughs> Be still, my soul. Buddy Chesler has a turn item. <laughs> I know the story behind it. <laughs> Yeah, I feel a lot like Don Ripple. You know, he can't get no respect for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jim Bob. Well, we were a little bit slow at the class the other night, so we were teaching turning boxes. So I turned one. Uh, come to think about it, I've been turning probably about five, six years, something like that. I've been helping Jim Bob at the class for the last two or three years. And uh, this is my first box I've ever turned. <laughs> so, you know, it just goes to prove you can't teach an old dog no tricks. <laughs> you but, did a great job on it. But uh, I encourage anybody, everybody, to come out and help us teach. It's a lot of fun. And it keeps your skills, or what skill you have, 
sharp. <laughs> so, uh, but this just goes to prove you can't teach an old dog new tricks. <laughs> Great job. Mike. Good morning. I have brought <clears throat> some walnut candlesticks as everybody can see. The twisted pattern. That will be a precursor of next month's demonstration. Yay. Yay. And uh, these are just, uh, you know, pieces of walnut I picked up, uh, made the turnings, finished them with tongue oil, and these go to the arts and crafts. Oh, 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 yes, baby. Woohoo! Mike, Mike, he hurt me bad. <laughs> This uh, this mesquite platter is uh, as much Jim Burke's as it is mine. He made the uh, the star that we uh, that I inlaid in the platter, and uh, uh, the work on that star is I'm really proud that uh, uh, Jim uh, got it to me, and uh, he's going to be making different. Uh, what we call, uh, I call a tube of, uh, of designs that you can saw off and use for, for different things uh, uh, to uh, put into your work or like this one, uh, this one, you know, covers up a crack. Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Uh, covers up a crack that's in the pith of this end grain turning. And I thought it was uh, a really, you can see part of the crack that here, it was worse on the, on the other side. And so uh, I just, mainly I brought this to show Jim Burke's water. Uh, it's a really great work and uh, uh, I had a lot to do with it. I put that winch in the center of it. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, that, that, that is what it is. All right, Larry. Well, I bought this piece of wood down at uh, SWAT in August. Brought it in. My wife's been after me. The day I brought it in the house. When are you going to turn something? When are you going to finally got around to it? Uh, it's spalted maple. It's uh, It turned out to be pretty good. You have holes in this sometimes. And it is kind of hard to, where it's spalted, it's hard to get it to smooth out. So I used CA glue and I've used uh, uh, some other glues on it. There was a wormhole here. I took epoxy, put uh, copper in the epoxy and filled the wormhole so you can see a little bit of the copper sticking through there. Uh, but like I say, I used a lot of CA glue, sanded, and I just got tired of sanding finally. I mean, you just keep sanding and it, I couldn't get it to really smooth as much as I wanted. The inside was the hardest. Yes, it is. Bradley. <laughs> Looks like Bradley been burning it up. <clears throat> yeah, that, that looked like too much fun last month, burning stuff. And I somehow made it 50 years without having a propane torch in my house. I now have one, so I burned five bowls. That's three of them were exactly like this, so I just brought one of them. But had a lot of fun burning stuff. My wife did not like it. She got over it, though. I did not set, I did not set anything on fire except for the wood. Talk about fire. No, 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 I did it in the garage. He was worried that my lathe is about eight inches from the wall. And I'm like, well, if it catches on fire, we got insurance. We're good. <laughs> All right, Randy. Check your team up first, right? Well, I've got several things up here that I brought in. I, I've got some limbs out there in the back of my truck out there. What'd you say it was, Jim? Quotidian. Uh, huh? Quotidian. Quotidian? Quotidian. Well, Quotidian, or whatever. The guy that cut the tree down next door in the middle there, he's got another that he's going to cut down just like it. This wood right now, I turned a piece of it just to get the bark off, see what it looks like. And it looks like it's a real tight grain wood. And I think this that stuff dries without cracking everything. So if you want to do some uh, some threading on wood like that uh, uh, after a Ray, uh, oh there it is. After Ray Hughes does his uh, demonstration day right there, and this stuff right when it dries, it's gonna, if it don't crack and everything, 
as tight as grain as this is, I think you'd be able to thread this stuff out there. It would be pretty nice there. But I've got a bunch of this in the back of my truck out there, and, and if I have to dump it on the parking lot, somebody's going to have to pick it up. I don't want to take it with me. <laughs> but a guy next door is going to cut some more of it, uh, another tree down today. And uh, so I'm going to have some more of it. I'm going to get some excess, maybe some bigger pieces. <coughs> and maybe somebody said something, maybe a, a small piece of that stuff. Uh, if you could uh, take that and make pin blanks out of it, see what that looks like there, or, you know, something like that. Uh, Whistle or whatever you don't do with the circle. Yeah, it would make it would make some beautiful scoops and tops and stuff like that too. Uh, last month I bought and I'm not finished with this. I'm gonna finish it. I'm uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm following Jim Bob I'm incomplete the project. I bought this uh, <coughs> drink from him last uh, last month and uh, I'm gonna finish it up there and, and this is gonna go to the uh, art festival for the thing and and that's a uh, big leaf maple and this looks like an awful lot like big leaf maple it is it is this myrtle i don't know that's what that is going what they put on my body oh, okay. uh, what is that <laughs> Wood. Wood. that's that's big leaf <laughs> big leaf maple well, that's what most of these are, then, the guy in the label room wrong. But that's what I made this little goblet out of. This and the big one up here had the same features on the, on the top of it right there. It's what I did here. I call them the uh, broken bases, is what I call them. But, anyway. but uh, I'm going to uh, finish this, though, and then I've got another piece of, of, of box out of it. And then I'm going to make a, a bowl out of this or something, and then I'm going to go for the part all right, great job. Ron Butler. I talk loud enough. I brought up a couple of segmented pieces just because we're going to have a segmented class in La Mesa on March the 23rd. Starting about 9 or 10 o'clock every when you get there if you come but uh, we're going to go over a lot of this this is uh i've had this here before called a greek key uh maple and uh, wingy pretty piece that my wife didn't know i brought it's got a couple of mistakes if you turn it around sometimes when you get in a hurry you don't pay attention and you glue stuff up wrong this is a, a platter i made last month out of uh, black walnut. Uh, again, we'll go over a lot of this stuff in our class. The class, we'll go from 9 or 10 o'clock to lunch, go eat, and then we'll go to Lloyd Cornett's, who used to be a member. He's a member in Midland now, but uh, Lloyd does, that's all he does, segmented work. We'll spend the second half over in his shop, and uh, he'll, he does a lot of open segmented stuff nowadays. So, if you're interested in open any kind of segmented, but open segmented, he'll be there. So if you can get there on the 23rd, which is the fourth Saturday of this month, we'd love to have you. What time? Now, I like to start about 9, but, you know, 9 or 10 o'clock. Uh, What's the take to drive from me to hour? Less. If you drive the speed limit, it's what? Let's just right under 60 miles. Plus, you get to see the beauty of everything between here and there. <laughs> is there a phone number we need to call or just show up? Just show up. My house is uh, real easy to find. Uh, I live on North Bryan, 1308 North Bryan. Bryan Highway, Bryan Street is the Brownfield Midland Highway. My house is a two-story white brick with a green metal roof. My shop is on North 13th, white metal barn right behind my house. Well, it's got a 12-foot big door in the front, just parked there on 13th Street. So, uh, Ron, he said something that I, I insulted him two months ago about not bringing segmented, and he had come down I don't know what, two years ago, probably. And uh, 
There's a segmented piece of the his that he's made. Uh, Coy Hunt's got one. He'd come down. So there's not a lot of segmented stuff up here, but the longer you turn, you find out the harder it is to get big pieces of wood to turn. You can go out to Acacia and buy you some maple or walnut or babinga, anything they've got. Uh, cut that stuff thin, glue it up. And the segmented stuff's a lot of fun. We're going to show you some articles and magazines and stuff on, on things. It's got uh, drawings where you can glue, glue this up after you learn how to glue it up and get it cut, where you get good tight seams. And, uh, You'll make some beautiful stuff that your wife will really like. Hopefully you don't <laughs> <laughs> All right, speaking of Ronald's, let's uh, have Ronald come up here. Well, first of all, I'll tell you where all this got started. Uh, these tops, uh, hadn't made any since I was in junior high school, and you know, I'll be 79 pretty quick, so that's been a while. But that's where I started wood turning, and something like that. And uh, as Ron said, uh, he accused me of not doing any segmented work anymore, and I said, well, I have, but I just hadn't brought it. So I turned two of these this month, and the other one is made out of the larger segments, and uh, my daughter made off the bib quite promptly, and so I no longer have it. Uh, I also experimented with uh, making some wooden rings without the titanium center. They're just uh, solid wood. Mm. And some of them are inlaid and different things. and. Uh, this is a piece of ambrosia maple that I got in the raffle a good while back. And it's, I left it thicker because it was starting to look like what I wanted to on the inside. Looks like some kind of antique mouth if you turn it just right. And it just kind of caught my eye and said, well, I'm quitting. That, that's where I'm gonna stop. So, but anyhow, Ron, I'm, I'm still sitting in. Ron I'm is a good down. host. Uh, go down there and you'll see that you get some good Mexican food for dinner and take care of it. It's, it's a good trip. I've been down there twice and enjoyed it. I'll, I'll pull the mic for All right. you. I, uh, I brought some things to show you. At our church a few years ago, we chopped off all the tops of the pews. Look like this. They're uh, laminated oak pieces. So they happen to land up at my house. <laughs> so taking these, I cut circles from them and I have about 50 of these left. So I'll cut these circles and fairly new at wood turning. I made several of these bowls from those. Uh, a lot of them have worm holes in them but they make interesting bowls because there's more than one piece of wood in there but I was in a, a war baby in England where we had rationing and so forth I was taught never to waste anything so <coughs> took all the outside pieces from where we cut into a circle and put them together into one of these things which I use at home with two round pieces to hold my mail on the shelf before I go put it out in the mailbox. <laughs> no waste. Excellent. 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 I think that's ash. You think it's ash? Yeah. Okay. If I, I just was told it was oak. I don't know. So ash. Yep. Very likely. Well, hang on. Okay. When you took our class, yes, you said you thought you would always do spindle work. Tell tell everybody what you said about 
Okay, first of all, I was given a lathe. I really wasn't that interested in turning, but I was given a lathe, so I thought, well, don't want to waste it. I need to learn how to use a lathe. And I thought that's all I, I would do. I just love using, doing the spindle work. Well, then I went to the intermediate class. I thought, I'm not going to do bowls and things, but I'll learn how to. That's all I do now. I just love it. <laughs> That's great. That is great. Thank you. Okay, Harry. A couple, three years ago, David Turner told me that if you take an empty feed sack, the seed sack, and put it on your lathe when you're shooting uh, lacquer, that it's the best thing. It's, it's, it's stiff enough where it'll stay in place and, and you cut a hole in it and put it over your spindle. I've been planting oats this week, and so <coughs> over there I brought some seed sacks if anybody wants them to take and put on your lathe. They're, 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 and I used it, and he was right. They are very, very good. Uh, the piece I brought today, <coughs> I don't know how many of you watch 5.30 in the morning on Saturday mornings, there's wood shows that come on PBS. And the guy that was doing it here about three or four weeks ago was making it bold and, <coughs> and he blew it up. So he was trying to figure out what to do with his bow, so he inverted it and made a little of a little bit of a jewelry, little jewelry box and I thought well I can do that so that's what I did that's white oak and, and this is ebony and um, it, it turned out turned out better than I really thought it would so did you blow one up to start with <laughs> no <laughs> no this is I, I, this is intentional <laughs> Yeah, you know, Harry was saying he was sewing oats, and, you know, that's kind of dangerous, something dangerous to say, you know. Uh, well, as long as they're not wild oats. <laughs> okay, it looks like we have Robert next. Okay, as Jim Bob said, we had a lot of fun and good time in the ending of the intermediate class. This is the piece that jumped out of the lathe one night. So I took it home and fixed it back up and finished it out. It's maple, and my wife really liked this bowl. And the last night, like uh, the other guy said, that we made boxes. And these were made out of cherry, and they were a lot of fun to make. Not, not real easy, but it was fun. Well, I've got to say, you know, uh, Robert Marsh happened to be in town uh, for the two box classes, and uh, I was getting everybody started on the wood, and then I just looked up and I said, okay, Robert is the best box maker I know, so Robert, take us away. And, you know, he did a great job yes. of leading those classes. All right, Coy. I made this bowl about uh, nine years ago, I guess uh, in 2010, back before I knew that you couldn't do some of this, uh, before I knew any of y'all. The only person I knew uh, who was a member of the Wood Turners Club was Larry Rogers. And I'd seen a piece that he did, and I thought, wow, that's really neat. And so I started trying to do some of that. I think this was the, the fourth segmented piece that I ever attempted, and uh, probably couldn't do it again. But anyway, uh, uh, I like that shape. I like the Indian uh, Southwest style pottery, and so uh, that's how it turned out. Good job. I heard uh, somebody talking. Wait, with Robert. <laughs> But uh, he said, you know, Ron Butler is right. On the segmented stuff, you don't have to fight with ingrain because you're turning 
all edge grain. And it, it makes a significant difference. All right, Robert, tell us about said holy peace. I made a couple pieces of the stuff from uh, David Haynes. Hello? Yeah. Hello? <clears throat> well, I made a couple pieces of the stuff from David Haynes, except I was trying to use the stuff that nobody else wanted. This is a piece of wall that with a bunch of cracks in it. You know, I didn't bring anything else, but I got to get things more stuff next time. That is good. All right. Great job. You know, our show and tell just keeps getting better and better and better. That, that is the primary reason we have started our meetings at 930, because our show and tell goes so long, and we want to have plenty of time for our demonstrators.